So hello, everyone. Welcome to Sisters on Fire IRL series. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the proud host of this online movement of celebrating Sisters on Fire in real life. And the fabulous woman virtually next to me is Chad. Next to me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> virtually speaking. <laughs> Yes. And so I'd love for you to get the ball rolling, get everyone introduced to you by sharing more about your story. How did you become the woman you are today? Oh, wow. That's a lot. One question, Natasha. <laughs> well, yes. so I am Shandria Lucius Harris. I am the founder of a new nonprofit, the National Association for First-Gen Students and Professionals. I am a mm. first-gen student who came from very humble beginnings and I studied social science as my undergrad degree, went to school, got my master's in counseling psych, and then the process okay. began to work in higher, um, in, in human resources. And mm -hmm. I worked in human resources as just like a generalist. So I've seen like the ins and outs of um, just young professionals coming in and leaving very quickly and um, mm -hmm. involuntarily as well. So it's more so like I wanted mm -hmm. to make a difference. I wanted to make an impact. I wanted to figure out why were we leaving? And so mm -hmm. that is how my case study emerged and how mm -hmm. higher culture came about and now how NAFSP is about. So higher culture is like my for-profit business where I consult universities and um, employers on how to recruit and retain young professionals. Mm -hmm. And as I worked full-time in higher education, I began to notice that there was a pattern for, for the hidden minority, which is first gen, which mm -hmm. is me. And of course, I'm super passionate about it. So I started a, a nonprofit yeah. to help first gen. So I'm very busy. <laughs> well, yeah. super excited yeah. because the cost speeds, like it's, it is a very big need to provide access and exposure to first gen students. And I'm just so passionate mm -hmm. about it. And I'm so happy to just be here today to talk to you about it. And to just yeah. see what we can do to help students raise their hand most importantly, but mm -hmm. like what we can do to get everyone involved to, to create that, that network for first-gen students. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are the biggest issues that uh, first-gen students are facing? So there are a couple. So number one is just like emotional support. So as, if you think about it, when you start college, everyone has that sense of like need of like community. You're leaving your community to yeah. start a new community. And as a first-gen, you have a financial hardship that mm -hmm. is... I would say intensify because you have really no one and yeah. the emotional support is highly needed in those first two years as you begin to navigate that path, learn systems. And it's very intimidating. And, and as I know, when, when someone gets overwhelmed or when you have a lot of things in front of you, academics, you know, social engagement and navigating the whole process of getting started, you struggle with yeah. just getting acclimated. And once you're yep. overwhelmed, you'll be like, I'm checking out. I'm out. Don't worry about yeah. it. So the biggest issue mm -hmm. is, like, first-gen students are not really, ish, like, interested in, like, just struggling and trying to test it out. And they're leaving mm. school, um, you know, really early without even giving it a chance. And then secondly, the students that actually endure college struggle with getting the access. You know, we're, we live in a very relational world. Where yeah. if you know no one, you get nothing. I mean, it's, I mean, you're really going to be still yeah. at the bare at the bottom. So my goal is to help those students persist through college, but also mm -hmm. land desire and gainful like employment where they are excited. Mm. They can actually go back to their homes and you know pave the way. Whatever their 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 desires are, my goal is to help. And I know the number one desire I've always had was to go back to make money fast enough to go back home and say, mom, we yeah. did it, we made it, we're here, no more struggle. Yeah. So I, I want to be a conduit, a liaison to help um, first-gen students get that access. And it's just, I can just envision it now, um, just helping mm. you know, across the nation, just helping first-gen students stand up and take a seat. Mm. Now, are yeah. you having conversations with high schools? Because it seems like, uh, I mean, really, you'd want to start the conversation as early as possible, but at bare minimum, high school connectivity. How are the high schools responding to kind of your efforts and your work? And are they amiable to the conversation? Or is there some pushback? How's that conversation been So going? it's not much of a pushback. It's like everyone wants to throw the ball to someone else. Uh, and it's okay. like, okay, let's get them graduated. Let's get them in. Like, they're not even in college yet. 
And so my goal is to get first gen students to college. So I struggle with connecting with counselors who actually have the time to deploy yeah. programming to help first gen. And so mm -hmm. right now, the biggest, I would say, light right now is going off in universities because they're having very low retention numbers. And they're struggling okay. with getting those first gen students there. Like co colleges across the world are struggling with recruitment. Because, of course, this whole mm. big debate of, like, do I need to go to school? Or, or, am I good without a degree? That big debate definitely yeah. causes issues. So mm -hmm. universities across the nation is, like, taking a hit. So they're like, mm. who can we focus on? So they're focusing on, on first gen and recruiting them and offering incentives for them to go. But to keep them, mm. the effort is not as strong. And they get there, and the emotional support is low, you know, for whatever reason. And then, yeah. Yeah, honestly, I do blame a lot of it on a first gen because they're just like, I'm not going to ask for help. They're not raising their hand. Social comparison mm -hmm. plays into that. Imposter syndrome plays in so It's a lot. Mm -hmm. it's, it's real deep. Yeah, yeah, and so absolutely. Like, and so I just think we need, from the beginning, a mentor that knows mm -hmm. the way, like someone to guide. And so a yeah. part of my nonprofit goal is to have a, a deep mentorship component where mm -hmm. there's strategic network. Like, I know that you're struggling. I get this. You don't have to raise your hand. Like, when universities ask, like, have events and stuff, they make it real clear. First gen comes to this. Yeah. Who's going to go to that? Who's going to go? Like, who's going to raise their hand and say, yeah. my mom is poor or my mom never been to school? Who's going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, who's going to really yeah. do that? You know? And yeah, yeah. We're like, oh, well, we're trying to help them. We have money for them. We have funding for them, mm. but they're not coming. I wouldn't either. I mean, it's like you're yeah. telling me to raise your hand if you had, had a, a baby in high school. Nothing is wrong with that, but they're not going to raise their hand to say, help me. Yeah. Which is yeah. why I'm redefining first gen. I'm calling them trailblazers, right? I want to redefine how mm. it is implied to take the the, the focus on off of like my heritage, which I believe in love, it will die by, and focus more yeah. so on the opportunities that was afforded to me by my ancestors. So gotcha. you know, I'm super passionate, and NAFSP is going to definitely work to invoke Congress to re just rechange all of that. Like just you know, mm -hmm. you guys did not hit it with that definition. Gotcha. And so that's my biggest goal. So yeah. So now it's interesting since you brought up the point, and I think it is an interesting point, given how the marketplace and, and all these opportunities that have been created in the last 10, 15, 20 years that do not require a college degree, what, where do you stand on that? I mean, you and I are both college degrees. I, I'm a lawyer, actually, by trade. So I have seven years of educational yes. experience and 300,000 plus debt. And I, I, it begs the question, do we need to go to college? And yes. if so, what are the three reasons? I'll tell you. Number one, when employers are creating that pipeline for you to, like, mm -hmm. have entry level into their organization, it's mm -hmm. only for entry level. Mm -hmm. So this whole you don't have to have a degree is only for entry level roles. When it comes to being promoted, to being leadership, you can you can cancel it. They're not going to consider you, right? It's one of those ploys. Like mm. in the eight in the nineteen eighties, they had these apprenticeships programs. Like all these, like come now, take you however you are. I don't care what your degree is. Just come work. We'll help you. It's this, mm -hmm. it's a new revelation of that, a revolution of that. But it's focusing on just come in and work. Con continue to be middle class, and we're good. Because mm -hmm. if you think about the roles that are dying, Natasha, these roles are like. When you talk about like workforce development, a lot of the roles that are not being filled are roles that are that doesn't require a degree, because mm. America is so educated, and and this is definitely highly debatable, and I I don't mind saying this, but America America is too educated for those blue collar work like roles where a lot of those um I would say a lot of those people that are in those roles now generation like X they're retiring like baby boomers are retiring. So I think it's a, a ploy, and I, I think it's crossed. But I truly think that it's a, it's a way to keep, I would say, classism in the workplace, like, um, when it comes mm -hmm. to degreed employers and employees and not, and, like, the incentive to not go to school is there now to help solve this issue mm -hmm. of not having work, um, having talent to fulfill these, like, basic entry-level roles, because 
when your okay. degree, you want to go into managerial roles. Like you're not really trying to go and like be a male, a male you know, postal service worker. Although there are great opportunities work for the government, millennials are not thinking gotcha. about it. So I think that's what it is. I really think it's the issue, and they are trying to find ways to give incentives for you to join their company. Good. Okay. Um, that. Mm-hmm. Good. That so I was just gonna. Say, gotcha. So yeah. now with being people of color. How does, how, how, where do we stand in the conversation? What are bigger obstacles for us? And, you know, what, what is your organization doing to, to tackle this, tackle these obstacles? Our obstacles are getting to those roles that, that are, are meaningful. Um, it's not, a, gotcha. we're, we, don't, we don't struggle with getting into level positions. That's not the struggle. Like everybody mm-hmm. has a now hiring sign right now. So, you know, the United States is doing very good when it comes to employment, you know, like, um, you know, the numbers are down as far as, um, what is, what I'm trying to say? Unemployment numbers are are down, like, you know, historically down. Mm -hmm. So now the, now hiring signs are up. But if you look at the trends of those signs being up, those signs are up for interlever roles. That doesn't require a degree. That doesn't require experience. And that's it, right? But the educated African-American are looking for gainful, like looking to lead, looking to expand, Mm -hmm. looking to grow and develop. And those opportunities may be um, few and far between, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're struggling with positions of power and really getting to the table, getting the seat to the table. So is the bridge to the gap then networking? Is it, you know, built like really recruiting higher up people of color that do have some say that need to actually like gainfully go back and, and hire sisters and brothers and, you know, like-minded folks? Absolutely. Like, there's always a space mm. for someone, a Black person, an African-American of power to reach down and grab someone. Um, but I will mm-hmm. tell you, sometimes it looks as if they have that power, but they really don't. They don't. Gotcha. But mm. the good thing about that is and companies have such a demand for diversity and inclusion. It is sparking yeah. fire, a rapid fire that is, like, coming up where everyone is going to say, yeah. I'm hiring, but I need you to be diverse. Like, so it's a great time in America to be African-American. Great time. To be <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Like, if you're degreed, if you're competent, if, you're, if you have all technical skills, best time in yeah. America. Because the conversation right now is, like, how do we get more women to C-suite? How do we get more diversity species? So it's more like, a, I mean, it, we think about diversity inclusion is everybody, like not just black and white, right? But it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. women, Gender, and like, all, yeah. that fun, all that fun stuff. So they're going to go for their first target. And, and first it's going to be like, just looking across the room and make sure it looks different. Like it, it, there's a, mm. a, a full plate of vegetables. It, it's colorful in there. Um, so yeah. the best time in America to be degreed, the best time in America to be competent, to have the skills. Now, that's what I will say. As a, a global career consultant, I struggle with getting African Americans to understand the the technical skills that comes with the roles. Like you have to come ready, mm. whether you're referred or not. Like you have to know these technical skills. They want you mm. to know that. And like other ethnicities have it down pat. Let's just be real. They got it. They know gotcha. Outlook. They know Excel. They know CAD. They know. All- all that, this yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. we have to be more trained in skills, which is why I love, love, love how Michelle Beattie is like working, like, hey, get your skills up. Like, and you know, career yeah. tipper. She is like, skills recharge. Let's focus on our skills because that is what is yeah. highly needed and what they're actually paying for right now. So if you have yeah. these skills, like you can come to this table with this, this like, uh, I, I would say, a marine mer- knowledge of how of all these technical skills, you're mm-hmm. solid. You're solid. So being that you said that, uh, have you tried to bridge some type of uh, symmetry or symbiotic relationship with a group like Black Go- Girls Code or something like that, where it sounds like that would be really fundamental for like even college kids when they're maybe the time off when they're not in school or summer programs to like get ready to be ready, right? Because yes. you always have to be ready to, to, to get to, you know, to go ahead and do what you need to do. Yeah, so, you, you know, I'm trying to connect with nonprofits and organizations that focus on the skill development piece. And yeah. I, when I look at the work that I need to do, Natasha, it is so much. <laughs> it's so much work. It's more so, like, yeah. I have to wrangle the students together, right? I have to yeah. get this course. Like, I have to get the sponsorship to help deploy the knowledge, and to yeah. also get them placed. So there's like, 
I'm developing a team right now, a board to help support with these in- endeavors because it's a lot. And yeah. it, you have to teach them on career development. So you have to teach them to know who they are and how they want to impact the world mm-hmm. and then equip them with the skills. So there's even a step prior to that because a lot Before, of students yeah, don't know what they want to do. Yeah. Um, yes. so I get so caught yeah. up in, you know, we need professional development, of course, but I need you to know who you are. I need you to feel confident. I need you to feel yeah. empowered. I need you to fight the imposter syndrome every single day and know that you suffer from it. I need you to, to be knowledgeable on career first. Yeah. And secondly, gotcha. I need you to start doing your career tests and focusing on how you want to build your strength and like how you want to impact the world and then getting those skills yeah. and then the, like getting gotcha. you ready to go compete. So it's a process. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, in your own professional career, given that you've done corporate, nonprofit, entrepreneurship, what have been the biggest hurdles that you've had to face as a woman and as a person of color? Girl. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to go there. You just asked me all the hot questions tonight. Yes. Uh, You know, (laughs) so millennials carry this stigma that is not cool, first off. And. I have a lot of things that are for me. I have a lot of things that are against me. I'm a millennial black woman who's who's a BBW. Let's just raise your hand yeah. to that, okay? And that comes right with a lot of you. things. Yes, it comes with a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. It comes with like I'm already going to be seen as aggressive. Of course, I'm already mm. I'm out there as far as like career driven. That is scary and can be career limiting. And yeah. I'm really focused on important in performance because I need success quickly. Like I'm a first gen also. So I have that black text that is on me that I have to pay. Yeah. So yeah. so I'm super results oriented and I'm very direct and like let's get things moving. And sometimes that can cause yeah. work tension. Um okay. so even when like I feel like sometimes young professionals are dinged or limited on their next move because they're just intimidating to Gen X, like who's already there. And, like, I was once told in a, in a role, like, Shindra, you're awesome, you're amazing, your, your results are there, you're doing awesome, like, we love it. However, we cannot promote you because you haven't been here long enough. And it wasn't based oh, off of wow. performance. Wow. And, you know, we're mm. thinking, let's perform, perform, perform. And they're like, no, we need you to perform and get the experience and stay around and stick around. So it's almost like how, mm. you know, employers say, hey, you can go to school and we'll pay for it. If you stay here for yeah. three years, you know, and three years after that as well. So it's like, yeah, that's been my biggest hurdle. It's like trying to okay. marry performance and um, so your like experience, but also being patient yeah. and then also like trying to reach back and help, you know, in, in every way. Yeah. That's been a lot of things that I've been dealing with. Okay, gotcha. And what would you say has been the biggest lesson that you've learned so far? I think you have to build relationships and you have to be very um, strategical about who you connect with and your time. And I think it's not always just best to pull on the first African-American you see for help because that may not be the case, you know? (laughs) You know, I would look at, like, if I go pull up, you know, a a directory, I'm going to say, who's the person that looked like me? I'm going to call them first, right? But if your goals are somewhat higher than theirs, you can cut it out. I mean, so you have to be very mm. strategic about who you connect with. You have to be strategic okay. about how you play the role as well. Like, not to yes. show your hand, not to be too, not to be too um, ze- overzealous about, you know, what you want to achieve. It's, it's, a, it's a thin line. It's a slippery slope. And, and you know, mm-hmm. I still err on the side of just go. Like, you know, yeah. God will yeah. make room for your gifts. If you mm. keep on a hiccup, yes. whatever, keep it moving. Um, you're yep. gonna have the. You're gonna get burned. You're gonna get burned, and you just gotta start mm-hmm. over. You have to reinvent. You have to recalibrate your ideas. Yes. You yes. You're afraid to make mistakes. You just gotta keep going. And mm-hmm. I've realized that just I started my business in 2015, and it's 2019. Me too. Wow. Nice. Yay! And you yeah. know, I look back at. I leave all of my old videos up. Look, because I had to grow. I had to get executive presence coaching. I had to get all. Like, I want you to see that I've grown. And mm-hmm. it's also been great because I'm able to just show, like, myself that I can do it. Yeah. But I'm getting more connections now. Like things like if you put in the work, if you just trust the process, absolutely doors, doors will open. I had a call today, Natasha. Like. 
I can't reveal yet, but it was just life changing. <laughs> like, yeah, this yeah. Really just called me and said, I need your help. Mm. It's like, really? Mm. Like, I would have prayed yes. for these days three years ago. So mm. just cut the timing, get off social media and just grind. Unless it's your social media is <laughs> grind. Like, you have to get yeah. time and just really be very prayerful and like intentional about your day to day mm-hmm. work and just cut off all the BS. Like, I had yeah. to cut friends who only wanted to go out for cocktails and who who wouldn't really like. I had friends yeah. who were like, let's just go hang out. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about my business while we're hanging out. Like, how can you help me? Who do yeah. You know? And and they weren't focused. Like, let's just have a good time. I don't have time to have a good time. Yeah. Like, I am the first fan <laughs> that needs yeah. help. So, yeah. like, if you're not going to add value to my life, like, just move along. And I'll tell you, be yeah. very, be very grounded. And mm-hmm. yourself, and mm-hmm. your faith, and your and your desires. Yes. Because yes. you'll get lost, and people, the adversary will like. People, if you go to the source, if you're fighting, mm-hmm. you know, as, as I'm not trying to get too biblical, but like if you go to the source, other people don't have a choice, and like you're fighting yep. adversaries, and people are like the adversary, the spirit is jumping in others as your friend, as your colleague, to deter you from moving forward. So you yeah. have to just be mindful of that and just have a sabbatical with them. Like, hey, you know what? I'll talk to you in a couple of months. Like, I have to get this thing done. And Absolutely. I can't. So, you know, figure out what it's going to take to get the work done and Absolutely. just keep going. Keep Absolutely. going. I mean, even Oprah has said, you know, you have to, she's had to divorce people in her family, right? And it's, and I think that, you know, at the end of the day, who are you living for? Are you living for you or you're living for your booze, your friends? You got to live for you and you only have one life and time is the most precious asset we have in life because you can't get it back right? You can make more money. You can make more friends. You can even call more people, your family. But when time is gone, like when it's done, that's it. We can't get it back. So every moment, every minute, every second has to be purposeful. And, and calculate uh, it. Calculate agree. every second. Yes. Like when I was talking about planning my goals for the year, like my lunch breaks are not lunch breaks. They're meetings yeah. to get my book published. Absolutely. Like, so it's like, Bravo. you know, you have yeah. to, you have to grind. It, it looks easy. All day, I mean, every day. First people, yeah. All day every day, all the time. And if you yeah. read all the stories, people who've been successful, who've made it, it wasn't a walk in the park. And my last thing that I just want to really hit and highlight, I have an amazing resume. I know it's jam packed with like, oh man, this girl is killing it. She's under 30. She's doing, yes. Yeah. But everything on there was painful. Mm. <laughs> it took yeah. pain to gain, to gain that accomplishment. Like, yes. there's nothing I look at my resume, and I'm like, oh, that was a wait. That was walk in the park. That was easy. I left my yeah. boss. Like, everything was, like, you know, roses. No, it was painful. Yeah. So when you look at where you are in your process now, if you're feeling pain, you may be okay. Because yeah. that is what caused, that. like, that is the reward. Like, you gain the reward from the pain. And, yeah, absolutely. you know, as a person, I, I worked lots of jobs. I was, I was with like 17 jobs before 25. And most yeah. of them, to be honest, were with recruitment agencies and working six months, here, six months, like just trying to work full time in college. Yeah. But what I was so happy about is as I look back over those, all those jobs, I was connected with like CEOs. Like God had me so connected to like, I can see them. My mm-hmm. experiential learning came mm-hmm. from temporary agencies. And which is yeah. why I'm such a great yeah. consultant because like I know I've been in every space temporarily yeah, like yeah. just grinding it out and at first i didn't see that light of oh wow shan this was mm-hmm. awesome this was good for you i'm like you've worked 17 jobs and you're only this far yeah exactly intellectual capital and I, mm-hmm. i'm able to really influence and impact students like so it's just get grounded on where you are and figure out why you're there absolutely and what you're gonna learn absolutely. it's like the most revolutionary thing is to know, like, why mm-hmm. you're there. And, like, what are the common trends on your resume? Yeah. Why do they show the up? common thread, yeah. Yeah, why mm-hmm. is this showing up all the time? And, you're like, yeah. and how can you really focus on that if you like that? So. Mm-hmm. And monetize it, yeah. Yes. And, you know, I, I, I think, <laughs> yes. And, and that's where the work comes. And it's just spending some time getting to know yourself and trusting the process. It's been beautiful, yeah. and it's becoming more beautiful as I know that this is just a process, and that every Good. day there's a miracle going to happen for me, for you, but you have to have your eyes be open to see miracles. Yes, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like, you know, so it's like, I wake up every morning and say, these are the three things I want to do. I want to accomplish these three things today. Yeah. And one of them is to be a conduit. One of them is to say, Scott, what do you want me to share with this person? Like, Mm, what do you want me to say? Yeah. Let me pause and see what is hot topic so that you can speak through me for them. I want to give them a word on your behalf. And in yes, going to bed, knowing that I'm going to be very, you know, when I go to bed, I'm thinking I was intentional today. I don't mm-hmm. know who you were able to touch through me today, but I'm just so thankful that you used me today. And, yeah, and absolutely. Then, so it's just, you have to be intentional. You have to get up yeah. and grind every day. You have to focus on just being your best self. Absolutely. You, my dear, I mean, I hope, first of all, I hope you're very proud of yourself because like everything that you're saying is like truth gospel that I live. I just did a talk today and just said so much of that as well. And it's such an honor to speak with someone who is so powerful and so evolved, right? And so enlightened at such a young age. So I hope you wake up and you say, you know, thank you for being alive and thank you for all the glory and amazement that you have inside of you. And, And I think everyone watching this on the live and on the replay can feel that, can hear it, can see it. So, you know, I commend you, sister, for being amazing. And, you know, obviously you're in this series because you're Sister on Fire. So, you know, who for you, yes, who for you (laughs) in your life have been, you know, A, first, what what would you define a Sister on Fire as? And then who in your life is that for you? Oh, my. You're going to make me cry. So a Sister on Fire to me is a sister who's intentional about what needs to happen. Like, I get that there's so many celebrities and people out there that are, like, making good money, but if there's no impact on someone else, honey, you're missing the mark. (laughs) You know, the most amazing feeling is someone to say, Shane, you've changed my life. And so Sister on Fire to me is someone who's been intentional about their power and influence and making it happen for someone else. So I recently accepted a role in corporate America, and I didn't tell anybody I was going to save it for your podcast. Yeah. And it's going to be, it's with the organi- leadership and organization development team for a Fortune 60 company. So, Natasha, nice. your girl, is, I'm at the table, I'm sitting down, and yeah. I support programming for executives of the company, like the top five. Mm. This, is, this is a Fortune Beautiful. 60 company. Mm. And the person that got me on there was a sister. And it changed. Mm my whole thought of sisters because number one i struggled with being burned by sisters and but it changed everything she's molded me she's brought she brought me in she molded me like i'm sitting Mm. next to the best the best and the brightest and she every day it's like shit how's it going you know you'll Mm. get it you're great like she is intentional about continuing to motivate me because like this is a big role like yeah. This is huge. And like as I'm trying to start this new role and start this nonprofit, like she didn't leave me. Like she said, I think you deserve to be here. I'm gonna use my influence and get your butt in yeah. here. Right. And like mm. I believe in you. So I don't yeah. care if you talk to the CEO, the CFO, the CMO. I don't care if you don't look like them because it's only two of us in yeah. the room. You mm. got what it takes. There's only two of us. Two. Yeah. So to me, a sister on fire is someone who has the power of influence and who has been very intentional yes. about it. He said, who's working hard? Who's grinding? And I want to get yes. access and exposure. And Michelle, career tipper, mm-hmm. said, Shandria, I want you to connect with Natasha. She needs to talk to you. Michelle's a sister on fire because she's intentional yes. about who needs this exposure. Mm. Yes. So I've been working to say, who needs this exposure? Who's working? Who's grinding? Who's head to the ground? Yeah. Who's, who's doing that? And to me, a sister mm-hmm. fire is someone who's been intentional. So, Natasha, your sister yes. fire girlfriend. I mean, you're highlighting <laughs> women who has been intentional. So, yes, I just love the way. I love the energy. I love everything about what you're doing. Um, hopefully, you. I'll get to New York soon. And if I do, I'm going to reach out to you because yes. I want to connect and, like, hug Absolutely. and share all this yeah. together. Absolutely. And so, yeah, I'm excited. Super excited. Congratulations. That is exciting. And yes, I feel, you know, I now would be the perfect time. So how can everyone champion you for your nonprofit? Where do they go to learn more about it and, and champion what you're doing? Okay. Couple things. So you can find me on all social media sites at Instagram is ask Shan the HR lady. I know it's a long title. Ask yep. Shan with a C, the HR okay. lady. 
But on LinkedIn, it's just Chandria Harris. My website is ChandriaHarris.com. But my nonprofit mm-hmm. is www.nafsp.org. Mm. www.nafsp.org. It says for the National Association for First Gen Students and Professionals. Okay. AKA Trailblazers. So mm-hmm. meet me there. Let's talk. I'm happy to help you with anything as far as like creating programming for first gen or for students. If you're a first gen and you need help and you want to be a part of this program, raise your hand. Mm-hmm. We're going to guide you, Trailblazer. We're here for you. Um, and if you just want to be like or the podcast, if it's conferences, whatever it is, like I have tons of material, I can help you in any yeah. way. So just let me know. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, I mean, I think you dropped so many gems. You shared so much wisdom. And like I said, just, I just, it's an honor to speak with you and it's going to be an honor to connect and network with you so I can help champion everything that you're doing. Cause again, as someone, yeah, who was the first to, my parents are from Jamaica and, you know, I went to school here. I mean, they got education here, but I was of the first generation cousins. We all went off and it was scary and it was troubling. I mean, thankfully, I met my husband freshman year of college and he was like, he's been my husband, my rock, my best friend for 15, it'll be 15 years this April. So, you know, it'll be a long time and, uh, you know, it's just, but it's hard. You have to understand. I love, you have to understand who you are, understand your blackness, understand who you're going to be in this world in your career. So it's a lot guys. And she's here to help navigate you and be a conduit. I love that you said a conduit, right? And so don't not get in touch with her. Don't not figure out who you're going to be in this world and the opportunities that you can explore. And she has some great wisdom and I can't wait to learn more about the book as well. So please let's keep talking, keep sharing so we can all just lift and love on each other. Okay. And I would be remiss if I did not mention my husband. Yeah. Like I could not leave this. Yeah. She said, I was like, Oh my God, I did not forget Samuel yeah. Harris. I did not because <laughs> Oh my God, he, he just, he's everything, you know? So let yes, me not be yes. remiss and say, I am yes. a married woman, happily married woman. And I do thank my husband for being my rock, my supporter, my everything. Like, he he helps fund everything. Um, And he's the financial guru, too. So, yeah, he keeps me in check. Hey. All right. Awesome. (laughs) Well, you know, we also, me and my husband have a podcast called Woken Free. So, if you guys want to come on and let's, you know, share this beautiful love with the world, let's let's keep this. Yes, I will be. We'll be in touch then, okay? Let's do it. (laughs) Natasha, you're a woman of many talents, love. A woman of thank you, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Okay. Absolutely. So everyone watching, thank you. Please get in touch with her and uh, have a blessed evening and keep keep grinding, keep moving forward and just uh, let's just get this, right? Let's, let's get it do done. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.